you what is up my dudes if you've never seen my face before hi my name is Kay, and if you're returning what's up i hope you miss me because i miss you today is a very long requested talitha i hope you're happy foundation routine i just went through and i basically did a, a full breakdown and talked through of my favorite products how i do um my makeup why i do what i do and just basically like how i get this look right here i'm super in love with it the lashes and everything are bohemian owned and everything bohemian owned i'll link down in the description box if it has a link directly to the store i'll link it but for the products wise i'll just list everything in the description box everything is basically drugstore so you can just go to your local beauty supply or drugstore and pick these up i got all of my stuff basically from lowe's minus the juvia's concealers which you will see in the video if my lashes look weird it's because i didn't really have time to check it in my viewfinder and i just kind of filmed the intro and had to go um if you guys want details on this hair and how I do my hair like this, definitely comment down below. I'm sorry for my edges. I'm sorry for the presentation on my edges. This is not cute. If you guys want to see how I do my go-to foundation routine for all of my, if whether I'm going out, whether I'm doing tutorials or anything on my, um anything on Instagram, this if you guys want to see how I do it, definitely um, stay tuned. But without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. We got the whole set up. Okay. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it took me so long to get this set up, right? It's actually embarrassing. How long it really took me to get this together? As a matter of fact, I still even have it all together, but I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a start. It's the start of something new. It feels so right to be here with you. You know, thanks, thanks. Come on, thanks. Hi. <laughs> so, for my everyday routine, I always, 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 always. Use moisturizer. This one is the Ponds Cream. Uh, I love it. It's perfect on me, perfect on my clients. I have oily skin, so I found out that if you have oily skin, it's good to moisturize um, because it keeps your oils in check so you don't get super oily throughout the day. Honestly, if this tutorial comes out bad, you guys are getting it anyway. I've been testing out lighting situations all day and I've not been happy with any, so this is the best we got to do today. And we'll figure it out. I need some lip balm. I'm a little sugar eye. <laughs> Let me zoom in a little bit so I can get like all into this. Yes. Give me 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 more me. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is I like to go in with serums. This is the Ocean Essence one. I have the day and the night one, so I don't really use it based on the time of day or night it is. This one is a lot thicker than the first one, than the morning one. Day one? Morning one. Good job. If you're looking for a good serum, especially for those with oily skin, or you're looking for a good serum to prime with for your makeup, this one is definitely definitely a good one. So I'll link that down below. Okay, so for foundation, I normally use the Maybelline Superstay in either 360 or 356, but because I um, don't have that right now, I've been experimenting and I found out that I have a foundation that's way too light and way too dark. This is Estee Lauder Deep Spice Black Cocoa Stick in Nutmeg. So I'm going to throw these on my face today. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and put this on the outer parts of my face. If I'm doing especially like heavy eye makeup, I really wouldn't do too much to my um my face because i don't want to take the attention away and then it also makes me super lazy because i don't have to um overcompensate for like a super solid base i mean i mean you could but why not this one is a little more red so i like putting this on the bottom parts of my face or everywhere that i would contour it gives me like a natural contour so i don't have to cream this may look like a lot but i promise you it's really not <laughs> so it's gonna take a flat top kabuki brush i don't like using um beauty sponges for my foundation, I just feel like a brush gives me everything that I need. And especially because I'm mixing a um, a stick and a liquid, I think a brush just melts the two together so beautifully, if you can't tell. I was going to just like let like a boy let music play over, but then I was thinking about it. Comment down below all of your favorite Bahamian artists. I want to start using like Bahamian artists in my, I like a ball cap. If you're a Bahamian artist, if you know Bahamian artists will be willing to let me use their music in the video, definitely let me know. You can tell it matched my face almost perfectly. My neck, my face, and my chest are three different shades. So my, I'm making my foundation just a little bit darker. You can't really tell on camera because of the lights, but I definitely can tell in person. So now I'm going to go in with concealer. Normally I kind of alternate. This is the Allego Concealer in Fawn. I just started using this again. This is the Juvia's Place Concealer in 11. But I think, I think I'm gonna go in with Fawn. I'm trying to make this as like, you know, accessible as possible. You can find the LA Girl and the Maybelline in um, in the beauty supply. So I'm putting this on the places I would normally highlight, so forehead. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of the Juvia's Place, why not? Why not, it, won't, it really won't kill me. When you're highlighting and um, contouring, you want to make sure to go in with not only a concealer shade that matches your undertone, but know your undertones, and then you want to go at least two shades, not more, not less, 
but if you're a beginner two shades lighter than your natural skin tone oh it looks so crazy this set was completely optional but i do cream contour and i use the black opal stick in suede mocha i just put a little bit on my cheekbones and i take whatever the rest is and i put it onto my forehead a little goes definitely a long way with this product so be very careful anything from black opal i stand not only are they affordable but they're really good and they're very multi-purpose okay a little fun fact about me is i personally like um using brushes versus beauty sponges i feel like a brush just gives me more airbrush finish but if i feel like um the brush isn't doing it for me that one time i may go in with a beauty sponge but normally i would definitely go in with a brush and then just keep going back and forth between the brush i blend out my concealer with and the one I blend up my foundation with. I feel like I'm making this look more complicated than it actually is. It's really not. You just make sure everything is well blended. You may like a sponge. Um, you may like a brush. You may like to use both as a combination. Oh, I try, I'm trying not to make this as complicated as possible, but I have to. I'm just gonna take a little brush and some of my nose contour because I realize my face is looking a little washed out. <laughs> Whenever I contour my nose, I just don't go straight down. I follow the natural lines of my nose and you can tell from your eye socket goes straight into your nose. And narrowing them right in here and putting adding contour product really helps to snatch the nose. <laughs> it eliminates the nostrils. It can be a little messy. Honestly, I get pretty messy with it sometimes. I just kind of go back and forth until I'm happy with it. And then if you don't, you can take a beauty sponge or take your um, brush that you use and just pack right up on the sides of the nose. So now we're going to move on to powder. This is the part where I realize a lot of people struggle the most. They want to know how to avoid flashback. They want to avoid how to like have cakey under eyes. And I had to learn the hard way how to avoid cakey under eyes. I have little dips under my eyes. And with these dips, they tend to crease like crazy. They're starting to crease right now. So whenever I go to put powder under them, I definitely have to blend a little extra. I believe that you can make any powder work, but to make it easier on yourself, Find a powder that A, matches your undertone, the one that you're comfortable working with. Some people know how to work with white powders. Um, definitely a good white powder for dark skin that I would recommend is the Maybelline Shine Free Loose Powder. This one is in light. I know they have other shades, but this is the one I use. I love this one so much. And if you want to look for another good powder for dark skin, this is the Black Oval Powder. They make these in shades light, medium, and deep. I have medium and deep, and both of them are really good. This is the one that I'm going to be using today, and if you're looking for Another set of good powders, I think I have, for loose powders at least, you can find the Maybelline Fit Me. They're the square box. I personally use them on myself because I realize that they just don't work for me, but I've tried them on clients and tried them on other people and they tend to work really, really well. They're really good for brightening, but they're not necessarily mattifying powders, so I definitely would recommend layering that powder with another powder to make sure that you don't get creases or you don't look oily throughout the day. But that also is a really good powder. The powder that I'll be using today under my eyes is the, like I said, black opal. This is in the shade 400 medium. And if you're looking for a like a more yellow based powder, the Sasha Buttercup is really good. But if you're looking for something a little more affordable, the AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder in the shade Banana. I love this shade. I've used this multiple times. I love it for nose contouring especially because it just like snatched everything together and I love it so much. Just use my same brush I blended out with earlier and just kind of eliminate all the creases you don't want to put too much product under the eyes right away and I had to learn that the hard way <laughs> so I didn't look so cakey so I start from right where my t-zone area where I normally get oily the most and then I essentially bring like eventually bring the powder up into my under eyes if I'm wearing um, eye makeup I don't even bring it all the way up to my under eyes sometimes because I do have eye makeup under there As you can tell, it didn't give me that much of a super bright under eye, but it did do the job because it is like about, it's about the same shade as my concealer that I use. I do have smile lines, so I do, instead of swiping the powder, I try to press it in so that it gives me a smooth airbrush finish, but it also kind of helps eliminate my smile lines. I know this video is going to be pretty long, and I know it's going to be like very drawn out, but I did want to kind of um talk about all of your concerns because i did 
a few weeks ago asked on Twitter um, what are your concerns on wearing makeup and things like that. I was going to take a little pause in the video and talk a little bit about the difference between a pressed powder and loose powder. A lot of people are kind of scared to use loose powders because they feel like it's going to make them look extra cakey due to excessive baking or using way too much powder. Girls who you see online who use that much powder have tried and figured out what works for them. So I recommend definitely like using a brush and layering powders and I get the same effect as if I bake versus layering different powders. By adding layers it makes this, like the skin a little more breathable, a little more movable. When I started baking it didn't work for me because my face always felt tight and I didn't like the way it felt and I have to keep going over with setting spray and using all types of other things to make sure that my face was not cakey and I didn't get flashback. But by layering the powders and taking your time, I realized it's making my skin a lot more movable, a lot more breathable, using less product. Now, um, I so showed you guys some of my favorite loose powders. Let me show you two of my favorite drugstore setting powders. I don't have any of my high-end setting powders, so I'm just going to talk about drugstore since we're going to keep everything a little affordable in this video. So my two favorite setting powders are the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless ones and the LA Girl Pro Face Powders. You can use these for... Um, setting under the eye, all over the face, contouring, highlighting, bronzing, depending. They're super affordable. In the Bahamas, these are about $8 and I think these are about the same price, maybe a little less. And you get a lot of product, they last very long and they, I promise you, will not get flashback. If I know that I'm going to be out for a very long time, I'm going to be taking pictures. An extra secure step that I like to use is using a face powder over the loose powder that I put on just to avoid any excess flashback and then it also does give you a nice micro smooth finish. These two are tried and true. I love these so much. Sometimes when I feel like my face is just looking a little too greasy, these are also good touch-up powders to carry in your purse even if you didn't use them in the um, application of your makeup. I just take a little bit and just put it right under my contour. I'm using the Maybelline one by the way. Just to make sure that my contour on my forehead and the highlight blends better, I got to go in over it and just add a little bit of pressed powder. This also eliminates the shine. I don't like to add face powder onto my contour because that helps with highlight and especially on days when I don't feel like wearing highlight, which is 9 out of 10 times. I kind of just like set everywhere else and I also set around my mouth or right where my smile line area is. You can use these on their own but I definitely recommend putting on a loose like setting with a, a light loose powder and then going on with these. Or you can use this on your own depending on the skin type that you have. This is just a tip that I like to use. Before I contour and anything like that, I just want to get into my eyebrows a little bit. I didn't use powder on my eyelids simply because I'm going in with my eyebrows now. I'm gonna rush through these quickly. Um, tonight, honestly, I really don't feel like making my brow too crazy. I don't pick the type of brow. The brow picks me because I always do my brows late. So however my brow comes out, y'all, that's how it comes out. Okay, so I guess these are the brows that kind of chose me today. There's something a little simple, it didn't matter. But I do this every single time. But now it's time to like the nose contour. So you realize I didn't put any powder on my nose yet. I could, I could contour my nose <laughs> with the powder that I use. But I like to do a lot of reverse contouring. So I'm going with the Maybelline powder I showed you guys earlier. So when I contour my nose, I don't scrub from the sides here. I start from where like my nostril ends and go straight up. Like right there. And I then use like a decent amount of powder to make sure the line is nice, nice and straight. Everybody's nose has a natural line. I just tend to follow that and then my nose contour comes up pretty dope. When it came to nose contouring, contouring and how I learned, honestly, I just saw a bunch of girls do it. Realized what I liked from what I didn't like and put it all together. And then I take a smaller brush. This is like a little pencil brush you'd use for your under eyes. Take a little bit of that powder. Go right on the tip where the light hits. Then I don't go straight down. I just go to this little, like the middle part and we let that sit. So now we're gonna look at where we just had a nose job <laughs> and we're gonna contour. For contour, I use two products. The first product that I'm going in is my LA Girl powder and this is in the shade Coco. This is um, the cool tone bronzer um, contour shade. So I go right in the corner. I don't leave the corner. I never bring it to the front. I stick right to where my cheek naturally lifts and I highlight, I mean I contour right there. I do bring the excess powder onto my forehead and that's that. For bronzer if you will, um, I did have the ABH bronzer mahogany but I recently ran out so I have to get a new one. So I'm using the, the Juvia's Place. This is the Saharan 2 palette and this is in the shade. This is basically the only brown shade in the palette and this is the perfect contour shade for me. I don't know why, but I've always been like a, I kind of like stamp my thing in place and just go in little circular motions and blend it out. I guess that's always been the way I done my, I did my contour, so. Your contour has to be, is like, 
you're building another shadow so you see where this naturally has a shadow just mimicking that to kind of bring more dimension back in the face and then a bronzer um, just adds warmth and more life back into the face you can tell that this one is a little more orangey than the first um, contour product that we put down and now is my favorite part for blush I go back into that same Majubi face palette and I take the only orange shade which is called Taza or Taza I don't know Taza I take this cute little brush from Luxie so I just kind of lightly tap and smile I love using a stark orange for my blush because um, I don't know but it, it's always looked good on me like I've tried pink blushes I've tried rosy blushes I've tried like peach blushes but I've never like I don't know something about an orange blush just works for me and it just does something <laughs> it does something <laughs> and it looks pretty good but if I feel like I kind of went overboard with the blush which I kind of did I go with my contour brush and I kind of bring it back over we really kind of reached the end of this video honestly so and I'm gonna take um the same brush it's a certain way that you have to brush the pot off so you can go straight down like how I did just kind of go straight down and follow the line which you applied it or you can sweep inward Then to go over it and just make sure that my contour is set, I take a cute little fountain eyeshadow brush, go with my contour shade. I just kind of bring some color back to my nose area. I literally only ever highlight my nose. Um, I don't like to highlight my cheeks because like I said, I have a natural kind of glow situation going on, so I don't like to highlight my cheeks. So for highlight, I'm going with my Jadora palette. I, this is very heavily used. I have a new one. I'm using the golden shade. I love this shade right here. I'm just going to go and apply the highlight in the exact same way I can't, I can't like, um, I baked my nose. For my everyday situation, I don't wear lashes, but, but, <laughs> I'm going to recommend some of my favorite eyelash brands, which I'm going to link them down below. This is the 610 brush from Luxie. Now it's perfect for applying blush because you don't want to go overboard and it's super buildable. So I mean, I didn't really go too crazy on mascara simply because even though this is like an every, like my go-to look, I normally wear lashes. I still haven't figured out which ones I want to wear yet. But I think I'm going to wear the body ones simply because a lot of you guys have been giving me compliments on them. I don't do the most when it comes to, um my lips but i'm just really gonna use some clear gloss my favorite when i do my favorite gloss of life like my favorite this is no joke this is my favorite gloss of life this is the daytime beauty this is actually a, like a really this is a clear gloss i don't know why i freaking over clear gloss i think it's the smell this is from daytime beauty this is in the shade peach snatch this is the second one i've ran through and i ran through, i run through these very quickly i think i might just um have to warm it up and get like the um the ten dollar bottle and I love my natural lip color. Like my natural lip color is like a lip gloss, lipstick shade in itself. And it smells so good. Like it smells literally like peaches. Like I do this all day. Even when I don't need the gloss, I put it on just like just like I can just get a little in there. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna pop my lashes on. My hair is so pretty. Alright guys, so we reached the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. My camera is literally about to die, so I'm going to run through this as quick as quickly as I can. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Definitely comment down below um, your favorite products and things that you like to use on your face or the order of your foundation def or routine. Definitely follow me on, um, on all my social medias, and um, which will be linked in the description box below. I can't talk so long. Like I said, my camera is about to die. I love you all, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys! With your boys got beef, we can roll with it In the club or the street, we can roll with it It don't make me